of the most reliable phenomena in the world. Most of the time, they gently rise and fall almost unnoticed. But every now and then, we are reminded that tides represent over 70% of the Earth's surface on the move. To harness the raw power of the ocean, some learn to exploit its predictable ebb and flow. Others completely ignore it. Ooh. I told you! I knew that was gonna happen. You and I both, sir. And then I'd keep that to yourself. Tides, of course, are the rise and fall of sea level caused by the combined effects of the gravitational forces exerted by the moon and the sun and the rotation of Earth. And if all that sounds a little bit complicated, and it is, well, here's how it works. The gravitational attraction from the moon acts more powerfully on the side of the Earth that faces it. This pulls seawater towards the moon, causing a vast bulge in the ocean. On the opposite side of the Earth, where the gravitational attraction of the Moon is weaker, centrifugal force exceeds the gravitational force, and the water moves away from the Earth, also forming a bulge. Tidal range is the difference in height between low and high tide. If a beach is flatter, the tide will travel further in and out for the same tidal range. So you can now see why, when you head to the beach, it's crucial to check the local tidal timetables. Low tide is perfect for capturing the romance of the sea. <coughs> but this is high tide. The moon's gravitational pull on the sea meant the tide was high. The waves crashed high over the rocks. <coughs> and our mysterious mermaid was returned to the sea. I can't see. Is that high tide? Yup, yes it is. And don't forget, the tide will travel further if the beach is flatter. So this is not the best place to leave your car. Maybe try a car park. Oh, and one last piece of bonus science. It's not just seas that rise and fall with the tides. Some rivers do too. Oh, oh my god! There goes the top of his boat. Now, to be fair, he had no option apart from that big open drawbridge just to the left. <laughs>